All right, uh, my name is Yuri. I'm a principal of Softvellum, uh, an Atlanta-based company. Uh, we've been developing software products for streaming media industry since 2011. And uh, our flagship product is called Nimble Streamer. Some of you might have heard about that. Uh, what it does is it provides the foundation, a building brick for those who want to build their own uh, streaming services and streaming platforms. Basically, it can take any input of any kind you like, any content, any codec, transform that into the output, uh, any output protocols of uh, your choice, and handle the load of the tens of thousands of people watching uh, videos at the same time on a single server. So basically, the limitation is just your speed of internet at your server. Uh, we've done a lot of other features built into the product, including content protection of all sorts, like DRM, Hotlink protection, monetization features like pay-per-view, uh, ads insertion stuff. Uh, so basically our customers come to us uh, with all sorts of tasks and uh, questions about how can we build this kind of delivery streams, delivery channels uh, for this specific need and uh, how you guys can solve it to us. So, and every Customer who comes and uh, asks questions like this provides us with the use case for, for, the, for the technology that they would, would like to support. Um, we consider it as a potential uh, new feature for our product. Um, and um, problems, like, uh, problems appear basically on a daily basis. People want to solve more and more complicated tasks, uh, especially now with uh, the rise of live production doing remotely. Uh, this was uh, a huge topic for our customers as well. And so what we typically do is uh, when they come up and say, okay, I'm building this kind of a delivery chain, but uh, here's the problem. I missed this and this piece, uh, piece of software that could solve my problem to me. And so our job is to, to help people solve those problems. So um, as I said, a uh, recent couple of years, starting in 2020, the remote production become, became a big thing. And more and more use cases uh, related to that. So what's uh, the traditional way of uh, doing live production is like you have one set, uh, one location where you provide your, where you produce your shows. Uh, the talents are there, the producers are there, everybody's there and so they're doing their job and uh, provide the signal that is ready to be transferred outside of the facility. So now, uh, and uh, more and more uh, these days, that changed dramatically, which means that you have uh, your talent sitting at home, your producer sitting at home, and everybody else is sitting in the, like, the production facility. They need to communicate somehow. They need to deliver those streams, the live streams, with good, good quality uh, on a daily basis. That's, our, that's, that's their problem. Like, we need to uh, keep that uh, consistent at we, as we used to do it uh, on the local production. So there are multiple locations where pe people sitting with different uh, types of hardware and software. Uh, they have all, each of them have their own uh, network environments. Uh, you cannot just predict what they're going to have at their uh, own site. And uh, what's more important is that uh, they're all using conventional networks to connect themselves among each other. Basically, your home Wi-Fi, your mobile connection, your mobile device, uh, mobile, mobile internet. Um, you cannot control that environment at all, and, and, uh, unlike your local network that, you, that we're all used to. Uh, and so they come to us uh, and describe another problem, like, like they, they always do. So how do we uh, deliver a signal uh, between those uh, distant locations uh, re reliably between those production sites. Uh, we want to keep the quality of our, of, uh, of our image because you know high quality cameras, uh, high quality software and hardware that produces that on site, it needs to remain like this when we pr pr produce the output for our end users, our, for our viewers. And uh, Another important thing is that we want to keep it as simple as possible because uh, we got tons of tons of uh, like equipment that we have already. A lot of software that we use It's complicated enough not to add another piece of complicated software in place. Like keep it simple as possible, and uh, and of course the cheaper it is, the better because uh, you know 
we all we, we want we all want to cut some costs. We want we want, we want to save some money. We want to make it uh, as energy efficient as possible, due to various reasons. So, what can you do, guys, for us to solve those, those problems? And uh, to see what uh, what's this all about, like uh, let's see uh, what we're using now. They are using now on site on locations. I think uh, most of you know what NDI is, so let's just uh, run through it uh, quickly. So it's uh, nowadays it's kind of a de facto standard for live streaming, for live production inside of a production facility. A lot of uh, low and mid end customers uh, use that for the production. A lot of uh, high end customers get that, use that sometimes as well. So and uh, it's supported across the ecosystem of hardware and software. So it's a de facto standard which everybody uses. And of course it provides the highest quality uh, possible for the devices and very low latency, like dozens of milliseconds at most. However, the, however, it has a huge problem which is a big expectation for networks. Uh, huge, uh, huge uh, streams coming up. Uh, you cannot send them over conventional networks uh, uh, on a daily basis, it's nearly impossible. It's it's possible, but you're going to lose a lot of content. And we can, if we go back to the problem that we indicated, we need to keep that content as uh, consistent as possible. And then, what can we do with this? So uh, we we provided the solution based on SRT uh, uh, since its inception in 2017 by High Vision. It's it, it quickly came up uh, uh, to be a, another standard of transmission. A lot of hardware and software use that. We've been a part of the uh, SOT Alliance since 2017. We've been early adopters of that technology. And uh, we, uh, we added that into Nimble Streamer Media Server. We added that into our mobile, uh, mobile applications uh, like Latix Broadcaster and Latix Player. Uh, we, we have it covered in our products. We follow up with the development. We submit like fixes and uh, code co contributions. So we know that the uh, technology is reliable enough to send uh, the signal reliably over the unconventional networks. Uh, so what is this? It's basically, it's a reliable UDP. It's a UDP made uh, in a proper way to uh, deliver it with uh, low packets loss or no packets loss at all. That's, that's the goal. Uh, it can transfer multiple channels at the same time because it's, it, it uses uh, MPEG uh, TS transport, which can include multiple channels, audio, video, it doesn't matter. And uh, it's, what's more important, it's codec agnostic. You can push HEVC, AVC, VP9, VP8, whatever you want. It will just deliver it as is. Of course, there are, there are some other nice features like forward error correction, and it can, it, it can transfer like uh, metadata inside of it. Like there's a recent example of uh, us inserting uh, timestamps as a metadata. It can still be transferred via SRT and uh, sync up multiple devices at the same time uh, in, a, in a time scale. So the technology is there. The technology is good. So why not why not try to combine them together? So we ended up uh, implementing NDI into Nimble Streamer and provide, it, provide this uh, trans transformation capability to our customer. So how does the pipeline look, uh, look like now? So what, what we recommend to our customers, what they use. Uh, you have your NDI signal created and uh, round up by your production team on one site, on one location. Um, you have it ready to be streamed. You push into Nimble Streamer. Uh, or to any other product that is capable of transforming NDI. What, does, what it does next is, the, is allow us to uh, take the signal, take this uh, image, audio, whatever, repackage it, tr transcode, and repackage it, to, uh, it into SRT uh, streams. Yeah, why transcode? Because NDI has its own uh, format. It's not coding, but a format. So you need to transform it into some more conventional codec, which can be carried by SRT. So we recommend using either HEVC or AVC. It depends on the hardware that is installed on the device that, user, that our users have. HEVC is preferable because it can keep uh, the quality, uh, a good quality of NDI stream as it is now and uh, keep it as low bandwidth as possible. So after that, it's packed into uh, MPEG-TS streams. 
So it's HVC or AVC uh, video streams. It's AAC audio. And it goes away into public internet via the network that you, uh, you have on, on site. Mobile network, your optic fiber, whatever it has. Then we have, we've, we've seen examples when uh, those locations were across the countries or even continents, like across the globe. The signal is sent properly. The, the, main, the main thing you want to keep track of is the latency uh, parameter of SRT. It's, it's the key to reliability of the stream because uh, what the key uh, advantage and disadvantage of SRT, it takes a lot of, it takes some buffer uh, to keep track of the errors that are there during the transmission. So it, it takes some time to realize, okay, we lost those packets, packets and we want to compensate them somehow. So the buffer, the bigger buffer you have, the more reliable connection, the more reliable stream you're going to have at the reception end. And, uh, but you gain some latency. So it's a kind of trade-off that you need to take care of when dealing with this uh, kind, of, uh, kind of scenario. So you put up the latency and uh, at, the, at the second end of this workflow, you get again Nimble Streamer or any other software that is capable of doing the, uh, this scheme. Takes the SRT, unpacks it into like, the raw image, transcodes it back into NDI, the uh, NDI provides the SDK, which allows doing that. Uh, depending on the hardware that you use, it's going to take more or less resources. We're going to talk about this in a moment. And so once you have the NDI output, it's there. So it's published into your local network, and that's it. Uh, your production team takes it, picks it up from there as if it would be in the same uh, location, the same uh, production facility. So um, the, uh, the pipeline looks simple. And uh, when you set it up, it, it's simple. Uh, it, it's really simple because people use it uh, flawlessly. You don't need to set up anything else. Uh, Nimble Streamer can be replaced, of course, by any other software that is capable of uh, transcoding, transboxing of NDI and SRT between each other. And so far, we haven't seen any of that. But uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a matter of time. So our customers tried this scheme, tried this pipeline. They find it really useful. They play around with the latency. They play around with max W uh, parameter of SRT, which controls the, uh, the bandwidth that is used for the transmission. A bunch of other parameters. Some of them may uh, use forward error correction. Uh, this is also there. It's supported in, in NimbleStream as well. And so the question is uh, how much, uh, like, what, what does it cost in terms of like uh, my resources? The key question here is uh, what, uh, what codecs do you use for uh, transcoding uh, part between NDI and SRT? Uh, you want to keep it as good as possible. You want to use HVC, so you need to use a hardware which is capable of doing that, preferably NVIDIA graphic cards. Uh, we use that a lot. We have some benchmarks about that, and uh, people find it really good for, for this particular task. However, if your production is like not so high-end uh, quality, if you're okay with like 1080p with a AVC, you can use some other software, even software encoders. It's up to you. So, um, uh, what are pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages of this approach? So, uh, obviously, this uh, provides you with the extreme flexibility. You can put this uh, nimble streamer. Um, on, on any site you want to use. We, we've seen examples of multiple sites using that, like four or five sites streaming all across each other, depending on their workflow, depending on their use case. Just wh wherever you need those SRT to be transferred to, just install Nimble Streamer, which is like uh, a Linux-based application which you install and just forget about it, or Windows application, if that matters, and that's it. Uh, the, the cost of that solution is reduced significantly because you do, not, you do not need to put the fiber between the locations. It's just the internet, conventional internet. The cost of license of Nimble Streamer and Transcore is also very low. We can talk about that uh, uh, if you want after the show. And so that's the pros. What about the contrast? So the latency, you add the latency, obviously. If you want to compensate those uh, packet losses, you need to add buffer. Uh, the, the more crappy your network is, uh, the more buffer you want to put. So you need to trade, trade this off. Basically, a couple of seconds of latency is, is, is the most you're going to need in this case. A second is 
more or less good. And then uh, if you're in the same country, in the same city, you can go even lower, but that needs, needs to be tested. Testing is the key here because uh, there might be some problems in the networking level. So you, you need to test that upfront before you do, you, you do and go your live production. So testing is the key as always. And of course, uh, transcoding your sources. Uh, the, the machines, the, the servers that you put uh, in the middle, where you put nimble streamer at, you can use any of your existing uh, solutions, any of your existing servers that you have right now in place, whether you have an NVIDIA powered uh, device, a uh, QuickSync powered device, you put nimble streamer in there. So chances are you're gonna have some, uh, some hardware that is actually capable of the transcoding. So for that matter, still need some resources. If it's just one stream of NDI that is coming in, as a result of, of your work at this uh, location, it's not gonna take too much resources to uh, produce a single quality uh, output uh, for your uh, uh, the remote production. So these are advantages and disadvantages uh, of this solution. Uh, as we see in practice, it's working smoothly. Um, it has its, uh, you know, it needs proper testing. As I said, testing is the key here. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much it. So if you have any questions about this particular case, or any cases related to NDI or SOT usage, you're welcome to ask them. Yeah, so anybody who has any questions, just raise your hand and I'll come up to you with the mic. So these nimble streamers um, on location on each side, do they talk to a cloud-based API or do they talk to each other in terms of stats of receiving and transmitting and knowing what that is in between? Or is that just part of you have to do your own testing and network well, tools? I get your question. Well, that's the beauty of SRT. You don't need to, to, those two servers to talk to each other at all. The protocol handles this itself. So whenever you set up the connection between those two sites, those two uh, instances of Nimble Streamer, the, uh, once the connection is established, it's up to the protocol to decide what's going on between those two machines. No, like the middleman who decides like what should I transmit now or how should I handle this, it's handled by the library itself. So we rely on the, on the capabilities of the library and it's, it's working good, I must say. Of course, you can, I mean, you know, the way you control uh, those two instances, we provide the cloud service that allows you to control both of those servers at the same time to set up transcoding scenarios, set up all the, all the parameters, all, all this stuff. But uh, as on a, on a lower level, on the application level, it does not depend on those cloud servers at all. It's just two applications which, is using, which are using SOT at the same time. They utilize SOT capabilities and that's all they need, that's it. All right, looks like we have time for one more question. Anybody else have another question? All right, well, now it's time to announce the winner of uh, AirPods third generation. Uh, it is Emmy Osterman. Raise your hand. All right, <laughs> you are the lucky winner. Congrats, and thank you very much.